Hey, my name is Max Goldstein, and today we are flying Beechcraft Premier One. Premier One is the fastest airplane in its class. Swept back wing allows it to cruise at Mach 0.8, that's about 460 knots at altitude. Its composite fuselage is responsible for the highest cabin in its class. Everything else? Well, let's see. In fact, it is so fast that the paint is peeling off. <laughs> I'll show you the pre-flight. So just like in any pressurized airplane, we check the seal, we check to make sure that the brake accumulator pressure is good, then we have to connect the torque link. Premier One is like a foster child. They, they called it Raytheon, then uh, Beechcraft took over, then Hawker took over, so nobody knows uh, who is responsible for designing it, and, and uh, later you're gonna see why. Here we got a baggage compartment. We open it up, and what do we see? We have to actually manually put this rudder in for it to hold. And we only see that half of the nose is the baggage compartment. Remember the Citation? Citation has the baggage compartment that takes the entire nose. By the way, if you didn't see my Citation video, make sure to check it out. The link is gonna appear up here and in the end of this video. Premier sits pretty high on the ramp. It has a nice ramp appeal. You have uh, stairs, so it looks like almost like a mid-sized jet. But at the same time, if you think about practicality, if you need to load luggage in here, you gotta lift it higher. Checking the probes. What do we have here? Pause this video and let me know in the comments below. It's got to be the baggage compartment, right? Wrong. We got an entire avionics bay here. So basically, this is what makes the ProLine 21 work. This airplane also has two Garmin units. The Garmin units uh, are in our ADS-B in and out. And uh, that makes a relatively outdated ProLine 21 on which on an MFD only see a black screen look nicer because I can take my iPad and I actually get more information than out of all of those avionics. And I'm pretty sure my iPad has more processing power than all of those boxes together. The wing is a hot wing. It is uh, anti-iced by bleed air, which makes it uh, much nicer than uh, the planes that have boots. A lot of light jets actually have boots. Controls are conventional. They use push rods and bell cranks and wires. Checking wheels and brakes. I double check the plastic clamps, believe it or not, but the anti-skid cable is actually just held uh, by the plastic clamps. And uh, once the clamps were broke and uh, when I was retracting the gear, it actually cut off the anti-skid cable, so I lost my anti-skid. Here we got one more technical compartment. You connect the battery and then we got a remote uh, oil check, hydraulic check, and engine ECU check. So, uh, and actually we need to add some oil on the right engine. Well, it's a remote system, but sometimes simple is easy. I don't know why they couldn't just put a uh, clear tube just like they do on uh, citations, for instance. Uh, there is so much space, which is basically unused. I don't know literally how you could have designed the composite airplane in 2000s and just uh, not put the baggage compartment over here. Oil is added uh, to each engine approximately every 10 to 15 hours. I usually put uh, half a quart in each engine so I don't have to do it twice. The baggage compartment is big, but since uh, the floor is made at an angle, it's absolutely useless. This big is the only good thing. Like, if I would be designing this plane, I would just make a large 
flat floor uh, compar baggage compartment and then put the battery or all the other technical junk in the tail or something. Well, I guess that's uh, what being a foster child is all about. And uh, yeah, when you hit this door, let's say if you load something, it's gonna hit you in the head, so be careful. What do you think of the way this airplane looks? Does it look a little bit weird to you with all this white fuselage? Well, you know, they thought it was so ugly that they actually painted a fourth window. I think it would look all right with three. Let's go fly this bird. And this door is kind of heavy. I don't know why they didn't balance it out or at least uh, did something about it. All good, all locked. Premier got the highest uh, cabin height in its class. It's a standby cabin, well, almost. I'm six foot three and the cabin is uh, five foot five. Still, it's the best uh, you get in a light jet. You got seats, the uh, armrests go up, seats swivel out, of course. And you know what's the best about having a row behind you? Well, is that you can uh, fully retract the seat and pretty much put your uh, feet on the forward chair. I mean, nobody is really flying the, those planes uh, having six people on board. And behind us, we got a pretty good left. Left is pretty much, it's just a bucket, but you got privacy, you got full wooden doors, they close, and you got an extension for full privacy. Premier has a ridiculous amount of tests. I have never seen uh, so many tests in any of the planes, uh, even though I'm typed even large jets like a Challenger 850. You have to check the fuel transfer, check the fire wall shut off valves. I close them, turn on the boost pumps, making sure that they don't allow any fuel, so in case we really do need them. Uh, uh, we can extinguish the fire. Now I open them up, fuel pressure low, light disappeared, and I'm gonna turn off my boost pumps. Uh, I already ran the checklist, so I'm gonna do the rotary test switch, annunciator panel, so many lights. Fire detector test. We got one fire, two fire, no fire detector fail lights, bleed, bleed leak, and pause. I already did the trims. Look at the amount of switches we got here. It's like, it's ridiculous. You know, you think this airplane was designed in the 50s. It seems like they took all the leftovers from King Air and put them in. For example, we have uh, three switches for probes heat. We have stall warning and two switches for pitot stadia heat. We, two, we have two avionics switches. Why? And the avionics, you can only turn them on if you have GPU or one of the generators which we do, which will allow us to plug everything uh, in. If not, well, tough luck, you gotta start up and then put in the FMS. Gonna do the FMS, status, initialize position. You don't actually have to initialize position, it will still work uh, pretty good because it has GPS. I'll just follow the procedure. Uh, we are departing uh, White Plains and going toward into performance. So this airplane, uh, this airplane's basic operating weight with one pilot is 8,533 pounds. We got one passenger on board, about 50 of cargo, and you have to input the manual fuel. So uh, that's uh, 
2580 and we'll just go 5 per work so all together that's gonna be 11,300 pounds of our takeoff weight our max takeoff weight is 12.5 our max landing is 11.6 so we're well under our takeoff weight i'm gonna do performance for flaps 10 today uh, we are at uh, 400 feet elevation so i'll just use 1000 feet to make it easier and the temperature is 31 degrees so 34 five it's our v1 today is gonna be 107 have to set up the speeds manually 110 and 2 is 120 this airplane VT is uh, always 140 our takeoff distance for today is actually 4256 feet and that's like just like in any jets uh, it accounts for the longest of the either accelerate stop or accelerate go distances I'm gonna do the test since I have the GPU. I'm gonna do, do the terrain test. Glide slope. Pull up. Wind shear in up. Terrain, terrain, pull up. I'm gonna do the TCAS test. TCAS system test, okay. In White Plains we have a digital ATIS, so ATIS information is Bravo, we don't have to listen to it, we can just uh, look for it in ForeFlight. And the uh, runway 16 is in use. We're gonna be departing 16 and we'll just AV for departure northbound. Did our checklist and we'll be ready to start. ITT Rising. Premier has a combined gauge which uh, has both ITT and N1. Spoiler test. This is the long and ridiculous one. And Premier, spoilers are hydraulic. And the hydraulic pumps are engine driven, but uh, they are held down by nitrogen pressure. So there is this ridiculous test. So we turned the test on. Now we are looking for the speed brake fail light to disappear. And you can hear it does something. Now we extend the speed brakes. Speed brakes are extended. This light is on again. Now it disappears. Now we got to check the roll spoilers. Why would they put roll spoilers on such a small airplane? Stall test. So on the stall test, we're gonna check the stick shakers. We got uh, two angle of attack indicators. First we're checking the left one, then we're checking the right one, and third we're checking when both of them are activated. So when both of them are activated, we're gonna get a stick pusher, and only when both are activated. I guess uh, 737 uh, Max did not have it, so MCAS would activate only if one uh, angle of attack indicator shows that you're stalled. Premier headed. Hey, speed forward. Find him here for take of configuration warning system. Make sure the trim is in the green and master test off. So we completed the master test, we're gonna turn on the stop the eyes, uh, there's gonna be a bunch of lights which will then disappear, wink and the eyes, uh, there is a long wink and the eyes test where you turn it on, and then you have to wait one minute until the lights appear, increase power, and then uh, it disappears, but we are not using wink and the eyes today, so I'll just turn it on and turn it off, just to see that the valves open. The Vionics uh, set, I'm gonna pack my takeoff data that's done automatically by ECU, engine control unit, EGPWS we tested before, terrain inhibit, TCAS, TCAS, uh, checked, and speeds are set, 
checklist completed, next is taxi checklist. So next time they say premiere is a fast jet, you know, by the time we are done with all this test, citation is already flying. <laughs> Ready to taxi. So Premier actually has the charts in the MFD, but it takes so long to load them. Even to load an app database takes uh, about half an hour to reach FMS, so to load 9 megabytes of data it takes literally an hour. Behind the Pilatus uh, takes a kilo Foxtrot, a uh, whole short of 1-1, one, one, uh, Premier 390 Alpha aircraft. When you taxi a Premier, it actually feels like the wings are longer than they actually are because the Premier sits so high, so uh, you watch out, it's a pretty cool feeling, but the wings are actually pretty short. In Citation, it's exactly the opposite. The plane is low, but the wings are long. So we're going to be departing runway 16 and then making a left turn out uh, northbound from uh, 800 feet. In case we have any failure or problem before we run, we're going to interject takeoff. Rattles to idle and uh, leave them deployed. In case of any failure or problem at or above V1, we're gonna take it airborne, continue at V2, positive rate gear up at uh, 800 feet MSL or 400 HGL, we're gonna accelerate to V2 plus 20, flaps up and continue climb at uh, 140. Uh, we are below our maximum landing weight, so we can just come back visually and land uh, back in uh, white planes. I like that they don't have the control column. The yoke is actually out of the panel so you can cross the legs. So if you're flying for three hours, that uh, gives you much more space. So before uh, taking off in any airplane, I'm gonna check three things. I'm gonna check my flaps, make sure my flaps are set in uh, the correct takeoff position. I'm gonna check my uh, trims, make sure the trims are set, and I'm gonna check my CAS through alerting system, make sure that I don't have any yellow lights. And that kind of works for any airplane, any jet. Let's go, make sure to subscribe to my channel, like my video. And uh, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Take a far set and you can feel the power. Eighty knots. Everyone. Hey. And when flying the Premier, you can uh, just uh, feel the power. The plane is very stable and very responsive. So we're gonna climb to 12.5. Gear is up, flaps are up. Just your damper on. Again, climb, tangents and con, leave them. When it bites off. Completed. I do like the electronic checklists. Well, you gotta give it to Premier. You will enjoy flying it once you get to the ground, of course. Traffic. Traffic. Okay, so we got to our altitude. Let's try out this plane. I'm gonna do a couple of steep turns to get a feel for the plane. Steep turns is actually a very good maneuver to see how you divide your attention and how the airplane flies. Gonna start at uh, 16.5, 200 knots. I roll out on the south and go do one to the north. And a bit heavy on the controls, but uh, stable. It feels in between a straight wing jet and a swept wing jet. Even though it has swept wing and uh, pretty fast 
a speed that has docile stall characteristics. Next one, we're gonna do a couple of stalls. We're gonna do a landing configuration stall, and then we're gonna do a clean configuration stall. And in clean configuration, I will actually take uh, the plane to a stick pusher. I think that's the first time on YouTube. The ignitions. Coming down. Yeah, gear, gear down. Three green, speed below 170, full flaps. I do have a green line on my uh, airspeed indicator, which basically indicates uh, my VRF based on my uh, angle of attack. Alright. So we're in landing configuration. The plane weighs around about. Uh, 11,000 pounds, the speed is 110, it handles really well. Approach and stall, the speed is 106, 105, it still handles really well, got good aileron control. And uh, we got a stick shaker. Power, flap goes, uh, flaps go to 10. And I'm always looking at my angle of attack for my recovery. This. Uh, the red line on airspeed indicator is actually an indication of angle of attack. It's, uh, it comes from angle of attack vein. Positive rate, gear is coming up, your damper on, and flaps up. With the positive rate. We are back at 16.5. Now we are going to do a uh, clean stall and I'm going to take it all the way to stick uh, pusher. 120 knots, the airplane handles really well. I do like it for a Mach 0.8 airplane. I got a shaker, we're gonna play a stupid pilot. Speed is 110, the plane is still flying. I got Buffett and the stick pusher. So it's stalled at about uh, 106. And engine take, take a little bit of lag. Why did you afraid? Gear is up, flaps are up. Well, what can I tell you? It's a nice little airplane. Since I got a uh, core flight connected to flight stream 110, I actually have all my traffic here, right here at, at four flight, which makes it really convenient. And that's uh, the most you can get out of Garmin upgrade for this airplane. Unfortunately, they don't uh, have an STC for anything like uh, a GTN 750, but that's what you get when you get an airplane. Uh, that is not as popular, let's say, as a Citation. Citations are so popular, so it makes sense for Garmin to actually make the STC. Let's figure out our uh, landing distance and speeds. Uh, our landing weight uh, looks like it's going to be 10.8, so our VREF will be 114. And our VAC, uh, that's basically our V2 for go around, is 127. And those speeds might sound unfamiliar to somebody uh, who has not been flying in jets, but uh, in all uh, honestly, in all honesty, they're simple. Your V2 is basically your VX uh, SE, your uh, single engine best angle of climb, and your uh, and your uh, VT is uh, your VYC, your blue line, your single engine best rate of climb. Our landing distance is 3,214 feet. And that's at 11,000 pounds, basically almost our max landing weight of 11.6 and uh, 30 degrees Celsius. That's uh, pretty warm at 3,200 feet, uh, taking into account that we're gonna land on, that we would land 1,000 feet down the runway. Approach checks, we got the speed set. Crew briefing uh, completed. Uh, its fuel balance is a little bit. Cabin signs, ignition sound, engine sync off flaps. Yeah. All right, we are all good. So a lot of people are afraid of stalling because they uh, learn in the simulator and they don't, uh, and they're really afraid of stalls in jets. 
in reality, if you learn in the plane, we can take the plane basically to the aerodynamic buffet. That's what we did when we did the stick uh, pusher demo. And the biggest problem is people actually come in fast, hot and high, and then they go off the end of the runway. So what you want to really do is be on speed because VREF actually gives you a lot of buffer until the real, and even until the stick shaker activation. And even the stick shaker activation is not the end of the world, right? It's uh, still far away from real stall. So basically, if you fly Premier on the numbers, you can land on wet runways. I actually had to land with anti-skid and operative. I told you about the story when uh, the anti-skid uh, cable got cut off because of those uh, this uh, poor design. And I had to land on wet, uh, on wet runway with no anti-skid, no problem. You just have to fly the numbers, you just have to be stabilized. And that's the key. A loss of control have been uh, the biggest cause of uh, private jet accidents lately. And that's because of lack of, uh, or loss of uh, basic flying skills. I think a lot of it is uh, simulator schools. Everybody thinks simulator schools are good, but in reality all they teach you is just to pass the check rate. They don't really give you what you need in flying the plane, into expanding your envelope, into going into real short runways and seeing them. Obviously you want to do it first with a uh, good instructor, but uh, you got to do it in real airplane. Landing gear, down three green, leave dump. Uh, 1,000. Nice. Okay, the plane is uh, touching down, it's going down the runway, let's see. 500. Flight slope. And Premier has a very effective leaf dump. It does have a tendency to float, but leaf dump uh, helps it a lot. Well, Premier is a hot rod of airplanes. Uh, it gives you emotions with its power, with the climb rate. Would I recommend it as your first jet if you want to be an owner pilot? Well, maybe not. There are easier airplanes out there, like a Citation or an Eclipse. But if you're ready to work on it, it's definitely doable. I've had students who got their first type rating in this airplane. I told you about its downsides, but you can live with them. After all, uh, premieres of the same model year cost a lot less than uh, even CJ1s. You can buy a decent premiere starting at 1.5 million right now and you can buy a good one under two. Let me know what you think about this video, let me know what you think about this airplane, which airplanes uh, you would like me to review next. Subscribe to my channel, follow me on Instagram, see you next time.